Today is a new day. Grace is new. And anointing is new. God has prepared before you. Today is a new day. Anointing is new. And the grace is new. Today is a new day. God has prepared for you before you. Simanyi wa Suze. Your night. I don't know how you spent your day yesterday. But today, your feet, they're going to begin a new journey. A new journey. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, whatever you went through, before, those are gone. You're beginning new things. You've begun a new life. God has a plan. All you need to do is to embrace. Is to embrace the new plan of God. The new plan of God. God has a better plan. The today and the tomorrow for you is better. Amen. Amen. You know the what I'm saying. Your today and your tomorrow is better than yesterday. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There are people's lives that is being stagnant. Stagnant, stuck. But you have given up on progressing. You feel like you have no future. You feel like you, are, you cannot take more other steps. Forward. You feel like you are you're, you're stuck somewhere. In a, in a mud clay. Mud clay. Uh -huh. and, and you are stuck. All in a pothole. In a pot yes. And you feel like you cannot take any more steps. But hear me. The point is not how long you've been there. The point is to believe the word of God. And God is giving you a new beginning. Can you believe the word of God? Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, God has good plan. You've got to believe this message. God has a good plan. For you. He is the father. He loves you. And he has a plan for you. Can you smart the Holy Spirit? Can you smart the Holy Spirit? Can you smart your neighbor? If you don't have a neighbor, find a neighbor. But smile to your neighbor. God has a good plan. Tell this neighbor. God has a good plan. Can't you see it? And you seeing it. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome all of you. Thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. Today. This is community life assembly. We love God. And we love people. Let's go to the word of God. I want us to run very fast to the book of John. The word is in John. 
Chapter 1. John chapter 1. We are going to begin with the very first verse. John. Wabanga waliwo omusomi wange atiro kunsomera ku byawandikibwa asola okusoma Yokana esule soka mm. kuva ku lunyiryo lusoka ku bulubereberye waliwo chigambo chigambo naba awali katonda chigambo naba katonda oyo yaliwo ku lubereberye awali katonda ebintu byonna byakolebwa ku bwoyo Era watali tewakolebwa chintu na chimu echakolebwa. Obulamu bwali mu ye, obulamu ne buba omusana gw'abantu. Omusana ne gwaka mu kizikiza, so ekizikiza tekyagutegeera. Wala biko omuntu katonda go yatuma erinya lye yokana. Oyo yajja olwokutegeeza ategeeze ebyomusana. Bonna abakkiriza kubuwe Oyo siye musana, wabula okutegeze ebyo musana. Waliwo omusana ogwa mazima, ogwa kila bulimuntu. Nga guja monsi. Yali monsi, ensi ya kole wakububwe. Era ensi teyamutegeera. Yajja mumatuwa lege, na ye abali mumatuwa lege, teba musimbeza. Na ye bona aba musimbeza, ya bawo buyinza, Okufuka abana ba katonda. Yiro koma. Ogeni mu yobrani ya kumenemu era ulunyiriri ulusoko kama wakubiri. Yobrani ya esura. Yobrani ya. Yiro kumenemu ulunyiriri ulusoko kila dala. Hebrews. Ulusoko wakubiri. Yenyabo. Chapter eleven verse from verse one. Mhm. Tandika. Okukiriza. Chekunyweza ebisubirwa. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for. Chechitegeza dala ebigambo ebitalabika. And certain of what we do not see. Kubanga abakade bategeleze wa muoku. This is what the Asians were commanded for. Oluo kukiriza, tutegera ngevi ntubyo na biyako lewa chigambo cha katonda. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. Oluo kukiriza. So that... Era echira bika, checha vachire ma okolewa, okuvamu vila bika. So that what is seen was not made out of what is visible or oh. what was visible olwo kukiriza abili ya wakatonda sadaka esingo obulunji okukire ya kaini nyega tude kulusoka damoso me kulusoka okukiriza mm. chechinyweza ebisubirwa mm. chechitegereza dala ebigambe bitalalika okukiriza kwe kunyweza Faith confirms what we hope for. Faith. It just confirms what is hoped for. Someone believes in something. That there is something that is going to happen. That God is going to do something. But what helps him to confirm that what he's hoping for is being confirmed, it has to be faith. There is nothing that confirms what you hope for. There is nothing that confirms what you hope for. There is nothing that will bring what you hope for. Only faith. Say amen. Whatever we hope for is confirmed by faith. 
What do you hope for? What do you want? For someone to have a confirmation that whatever he expects is going to happen, he must have faith. Say amen. Now listen. I'm going to talk about the foundation and foundations in this preaching. Foundations and a foundation. Foundations and a foundation. Now listen. Everything that is hoped for will come to pass because of faith. And whatever is hoped for, we shall have a confirmation on only one ground that we have faith. Say amen. Now, the question where does faith come from? Romans 10, verse 17. Soma. Valumi, Kumi. Romans 10. We need to have faith such that we shall have a confirmation for what we hope for. Everyone would give me an opportunity to know what he or she hopes for. And I ask you that you have faith. And secondly, the faith you have, how was it built? The faith you have. I want us to differentiate the faith and just and just forecasting and, 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 and presuming presumption for someone to be having faith and presuming or you're just desiring or you just want you just wish well for yourself are you having faith? how is faith born? Tulimu barumi esule ye kumi Odiyole kumi no musamu Kalo okukiriza Kaye okukiriza Kuva muku ulira Kuva muku ulira No kuulira echigambo cha kristu No kuulira echigambo cha kristu Faith comes by hearing And hearing the word of God Kati okukiriza kutu now the faith that is going to give us a confirmation listen the faith on who, under which we built the, what we hope for it must have been built in the word of God that's why you see the born again you really need to read the word of God we need to read the word of God because the faith that is built on the word listen that one will never disappoint us Maybe I say the faith that is built by the word of God it will not disappoint us what we hope for is going to come to pass whatever we hope for is going to be seen whatever we hope for is going to be built whatever we hope for we shall see them with our physical eyes Hallelujah. amen the faith that is in the word the hope that is in the word is going to produce is going to bring what it brings will be manifested the faith that comes from the word listen it doesn't need raw materials it doesn't need things if someone is going to make a table he needs the, the, 
the wood and and someone to make a car or you need to make an aeroplane he or she needs iron sheets someone to build a house will need the, the no musenyu and the the cement the sand he needs sand he needs the bricks he needs the the iron bars he needs bricks he needs the sand he needs cement he needs water he needs logs he needs poles Yetaga, yetaga, yetaga timbers. He needs timbers. Some use poles. 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 Some use whether the big or the small ones. You need a builder. You need an engineer. You need a planner. Then you build the house. You need to have a lot of raw materials. Now let me tell you. If God says I'm going to give you a house. He does not first see the, your materials. If he says, I'm going to give you a house, that word that comes from the mouth of God, it doesn't need materials. That word, it just creates materials. I will propel you to believe what I believe in. Because whatever I believe in is the word of God. This word, it creates things. When God was creating the earth, he didn't need any raw material. He made things and he created them from whatever wasn't visible. Amen. That's why the eyes of faith, they see things that are not visible, that are not the other side. And yet in God, they're there. And you see them. Praise the Lord. The house, you will see it. But in the, in, the, in the bodily things, you will not see it. Say amen. The car in reality is not there. The wife in reality is not here. Promotion in reality, the promotion is not there. Rank reality. The rank in reality is not there. But because whoever is speaking is God, that rank is there in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. The child in reality is not there. Even the material that make up a child in you, they are not there. But in God, the child is there. Ah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For whoever does not know English and you've never gone to school, in reality, you don't know English. But in God, God just creates English and you speak it and people get scared. Say amen. Amen. In the, the real knowledge, you don't know how to read. But in God, when you believe in Him, God who gives wisdom, God who educates, the teacher is a teacher. You are going to study. Even without going to school, you begin studying. Say amen. I saw a lady. The lady was so beautiful. She was so beautiful. She's not the very first lady I had ever seen. She was crippled. He said, I request my wife to come and greet you. 
There is that person who is lame who can at least move using using he sticks. He comes out. But he was just crippled around the ground. By the time he called the wife, too elegant. the wife was too elegant. Big and tall. They have beautiful children. Now the situation tells him in the beginning that who will you marry? Who will accept you? Be in reality. But when they are wedding you, how will they wed you? The wife will put down the hand. Who will that daughter, whose daughter will that be? When they are wedding her, she will just put the hands down. Such that the, the husband puts the ring on her hand. Will those people of her height be done? And there are people of the same size. But let me tell you, this person on ground, God can raise him, but he might decide not to lift him such that he gets the, the taller person to, put him, to, bring, to pick him up. If you can only believe the word, and the word build faith in you. If he says you will get married to a tall woman, you don't need to be tall. Because if you get tall, you're going to miss your spouse. Because God has already compelled someone to come to your level. Praise the Lord. If you're very black and, and you're changing to becoming brown, you're missing your miracle. Because God has compelled someone to come to the black beauty. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't need to change up your soul. Believing in the word, let me tell you, in John, the first gospel, in the beginning, the Bible says there was the word. Before you read, the universe was created. When you read Genesis, the first verse, the, the very first verse, the Bible says that the beginning, God, have you heard that? that in the beginning Katonda. God even the Bible exaggerates it that in the beginning of all other things God they don't create him they didn't make him no one produced him but in the beginning by the time we just were created God was there already he was there. The beginning. Katonda. God. In the beginning. God. Katonda. Then you add other words. In the beginning. God. Katonda. At the beginning. God. Katonda. Katonda. God was in the beginning. He is not produced by anyone. He is the one that produced. He is not created by anyone. He is the one who created. Come back, come in and pray. Say amen. Katonda. At the beginning. God is in the beginning. That's why you see. Everything we see on the earth. I was speaking to the home, the children in the home. The children that we hope. I told them like this. Are you seeing people? And the life they have. They came from God. Do you see the trees? And the wheat, the grass. It's God. Do you see the grass? There are snakes. There are animals. There are insects. It's God who created all those. Do you see the mountains? 
Do you see the valleys? Do you see all those things? Do you see the heaven? And its glory? When there are stars? And those that are inside the heaven. And what is in earth. Are you seeing the water? Are you seeing the lakes? Do you see the rivers? Whatever you see. It's God who made them. Men. Men. Are you seeing the rocks? Big rocks. It's in just the nene. It's God who created them. Our children who are studying, they study. But, but the rock formation. It's called the rock formation. It was revealed that the chemistry that is inside the soil and the earth movements, the way they make the rocks. How the soil forms up into a rock. They tell you that the rock was formed to be a rock like this. And you don't see the word God. It's really Ladies and gentlemen, it's God who made the rocks. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, with his word. He said let there be rocks. And the rocks appeared. Whatever you see. It was made out of the word. The question is. Who is the word? The word, the word is Jesus. And the word is the one that was used to create people, to create mountains, to create lakes, to create rivers, to create grass, to create trees, to create animals. Whatever was made, when they were using the word, without material, the word the one called Jesus the father that you and you granted things whatever you see and you don't want what you see was made it's God who made them yeah. He just believed. And said, let there be. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be. Without any material. But he only did one material. It is called the word. Who is the word? The word is Jesus. Where Jesus is. Whatever is not visible. That needs to be visible. The father is Jesus. Whatever is not visible, they begin to manifest. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. What you need is to believe. To, to be that is born. The faith that is born by the word. Who is the word? The word is Jesus. If you have Jesus, all things are possible. Say amen. So if you believe for things to begin coming when you have the confirmation that they are going to come you need Jesus. Say amen. You need Jesus. Jesus is the word. And when someone builds on the word that's why the Bible told us when we go to Luke Chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Verse 46. Uh -huh. And when he had finished speaking, he called unto him his disciples and said unto him, Why do you want to call me your Lord? And yet you don't do what I want. We are born again. Who want God to do something. We are born again to pray. 
We are born against who believe God. We love God. We believe in Him. But He says like this Why do you call me your Lord? And you come to me. You even raise up your hands. You worship. You pray. And you believe in some things that I'm going to do them. But why do you call me your Lord? And yet when I look on you, whatever I tell you is not what you do. Now I want to show you where the foundation comes from. The foundation that is weak, firm, besides being strong, you're going to produce because of this one besides being strong you're going to produce because on the foundation God gauges and he confirms that this foundation if I add on something onto it it will not fall it will not kill people when we build a flat on this foundation it will not fall. It will not kill people. And he increases and adds on and adds on. And adds on other people. Adds on the ranks. Adds on the money. Adds on the adds on the shares because when he adds on fall it will not kill people say amen who builds it's God who builds but when he's building he builds on his word he builds on his word now listen now listen and he hears and then he believes because he has heard the word that person who comes to me and he listens to my word and he takes it inside of him it produces faith when he's standing on my word without standing on the word when someone listens to my word and he listens to it and he does it it's like that man who builds up a foundation and he got off the wrong soil he got off the clay soil and he got off the sand soil he got off everything and looked for the rock why does that person look like that? Because my word was. is a rock. When someone builds on it, what is, does building on the word mean? You listen to it and you obey it. Where is the secret? Is obedience. When you obey the word, the words he has told you, you obey them. 
Whatever has hope promised you, you obey them. Whatever he said, and he said it, let me tell you, even when it's what, whatever he spoke, it will never be shaken. It will never fall. And it will never stay away. Even when it's like rotating around, it will come. It will have to come. It will come. Listen to me, brethren. Many born again. Those that even don't know what they, they accepted. Let me tell you what made me so amazed last time. Someone was, just, someone was giving me a story. Mama a mother gave birth to children. Tata ne mama. A mother and the father. Tata ne mama. A father and the mother. They were, they were always speaking in the con conferences and Fali, seminars Fali that we were so poor. We were really poor. For us to get saved, God just took away all the sorrow. We went to Jesus. That we went to Jesus. We had a lot of sorrow. We fighted with us. But Jesus has done it for us. He has educated the children. He has helped my husband. He has helped my children. God has helped us. They, they spoke what he has done. Whenever they would stand, they would say they, are, they were poor and God helped them. They entered church when they were really bad off. Now the children be began growing up. One day, the mother told the children to come and confess salvation. The child said to the mom, that mom, me, what made you get saved was sorrow. That is the reason that you gave us that you were really sorrowful and poor. You had a lot of problems. That's why you got saved. Now we we found when you had already made plans for us. We are not, we've never seen sorrow. Why are we getting saved? Now mother, you're telling us that God helped you out of that sorrow. Me, I'm not sorrowful. Why should I get saved? So the foundation that mom built in the children, he didn't show them that we get saved out of sin. Jesus told you that you, you move not in a right way, you lie, you, you're a thief, you're just a wicked, you're a fornicator, you, you, you backbite people, you break the church, you're greedy, you have unforgiveness in you, you have naughtiness, you're really behaving in a weird way, you have unbelief, you worship idols, And you really need to get saved. That is the first thing. And secondly, you have the sin of your, your ancestor, Adam. From Adam, from the first Adam, and then to the second Adam, who is Jesus. If you don't do that, the sin of Adam is in the blood. Even when you've not done anything, the sin is inside of you. And for whoever has that sin, is going to hell. The only 
is to believe Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. That foundation these children didn't understand that foundation. They only knew this. That someone who is sorrowful goes to Jesus and just takes away the sorrow. Now the children are telling the mom that we are not sorrowful Yes, so what will Jesus do for us? We are not sorrowful. Yes, what will Jesus do? Because you need all the preparation. Why are we getting saved? That is where the foundation was ne, broken. Ne, Ladies and gentlemen, e the first word is in the life of a born again. E the word of God you believe it chigamba, when it says that when someone is not born the second time he or she will never see the kingdom of God then you believe in that and when you believe that and you believe and you're born the second time how, how are you born the second time you believe Jesus that he died on the cross because of your sin and the sin of your ancestors what you did and what your grand is dead. But because of accepting Jesus, and you say, I repent before you because of my sin and the sin of my ancestors, you thought that you died for me on the cross, and I accept you paid a price that's that I get saved on hell and I enter heaven. And the born again who believed Jesus. Go to heaven. Avalumitano. Avalumitano. Romans 5. Or Romanana. Verse 8. It says that when we were dead in our sins, Jesus loved us and he died for us. Praise the Lord. Romans 8. Verse 23. The Bible says that the reward of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Say amen. amen. When you believe in Jesus, you get a gift. The gift of life. When you believe in Jesus, you get a gift of being alive. Whoever has not yet been is dead. Because death came from the garden. Someone died. But Jesus came to bring life again. To give man. And when you believe in Jesus, you get life. Whoever was dead, you become He speaks in John that when we believe in Jesus, we have come from death and then we answer life. When we believe in Jesus, we get life. When you believe in those words no, and you don't walk with them, you expect heaven. You expect heaven. Those words, no, when you believe them, no, even when you're dead, no, you're sure deal. that is a sure deal. No, you see the heaven we look forward to it and we expect it and it is going to come you will be in heaven that is the word of God things will change things come and go but that word whoever stands firm and he stands on Jesus even on its word maybe if he fall and you live faith. But if you accept it, surely you will go to heaven. Say amen. Now that is not different. That is not different with other things. When you accept God, we believe the word. We don't believe what we hear. We believe the word. Now these children even when they would have accepted to, ac to accept their mom even what their mom believes in God gives you money, blesses you 
and takes away your sorrow and they are built, they build on that their life is just in danger because that is not the word of God God first takes away the sin because of faith and then he begins doing other things that will bless you what is the first thing? Is to redeem you in spirit. And then he redeems you from poverty. Say amen. God can redeem you in a spiritual way. The need of man is not money. Is not things. The need of man that is primary is the spiritual need. If someone needs to go to, G to God, those other things, God begins building them on him. He brings the money. He brings the, the owners. He brings people. He brings family. He begins trusting him. But it begins in a spiritual realm. To deal with God. To reconcile with God. With God. Now listen to me, brethren. If we say faith is built by the word, then we ask ourselves, who is the word? That the word is Jesus. When you read this word, and you listen to it, and you do it, and then you listen to something. When the word has said it. And then you hear something. That the word is telling you. Even when I'm preaching at this pulpit. You hear the word. And you obey it. And you do it. And you walk with it. You begin to hope in that word. You begin to have faith in that word. The house you're building is going to stand firm. Why is it that sometimes we believe in things and they don't happen? The born again are very weak. Those who don't want to read the word. Even those that read it, they don't want to obey it. We have many born again. They're in church. He even doesn't know what he believed in. You cannot even stand up on your feet and tell people why you got saved. We have born again who got saved 20 years back. But what can make that person go away from church? Because they didn't go to the funeral for on, on his behalf. They didn't go with him for the funeral. What can make him or her leave church? The brethren don't love him or her. They spoke about him or her. Their, their houses are built on sand. They are just on soil. They are not on the rock. They change churches every month. The churches receive newcomers every month. It's not because they were commissioned somewhere. They went because they found a storm. The problem is not anywhere else. They didn't build on the word. They were built on the words. They didn't build on Jesus. They built on their thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, let me request you. Build your houses and they be firm. Build on Jesus. That is the word. Because the word, the one that is called Jesus, he produces faith. And that faith produces things. I don't know if you hear what I'm telling you. Let's build on the word. Then that word is Jesus. We hear the word. We take it. We do it. And we obey it. We believe in it. That word. And it is Jesus. 
is going to dwell in us. We see things that are not visible and then we create them. We see things that are not visible. We call them because the word the one they call Jesus when you believe when you are believing the word, the word they call Jesus, whatever is not visible will come to pass. Praise the Lord. I said, whatever is not visible will come to pass. Because Jesus is the rock, the real rock. <laughs> 